is that now you're starting to use Facebook to build your central database. And they're seeing the same messaging that they're seeing on Facebook as they would on your blog or on your homepage. And it doesn't matter what real estate they find when they're searching, they can find your Twitter feed, they can find your Facebook quotes and whatever it is, they're all going to go up and end up in the same place. It's a very, very important part of evaluating your current situation because social media is taking on such a great big um, part of our life now when you look at smartphones and how to actually use it. But those businesses that are using it properly are evaluating what their current situation is and then making the necessary changes in terms of directing traffic and using them as traffic driving um, strategies as opposed to areas of communication solely because, again, they're leaving the important part out of actually getting those people into the, the right place. Sorry, you mentioned that Facebook is evolving, mm. you know, without seeing the local competition between Facebook and Google, and Facebook is evolving, and it's evolving with the technology, and it's evolving with the technology, and it's evolving with They're, they have got plans to offer more business-centric services. They're coming out, and they look. You know, they've got their um, already. They've got their uh, what do you call it? Web browser out there. You know, Rockmelt is out there, so that you don't have to ever leave the Facebook environment. So they're looking at um, n overtaking Google to a certain extent, where you don't ever have to leave the Facebook environment. You can do everything that you need within there. F Mail is coming out, really original against Gmail. That they're going to start to really try and take the whole online community into the Facebook world so that you don't have to do anything. Now, for them to do that, that means that you have to be able to run your business from within Facebook, which means online services are going to have to be provided by them. And there are some plans for them to do various different things. Are they going to be able to do everything really well? Probably not. So it's going to be a long time coming that they can really take over. And then whilst that's happening, can you afford to ignore G plus and Twitter and all these kind of things? You can't. You've got, to in, you've got to sort of, not hedge your bets, but you've got to incorporate them so that they're all still doing the same thing. So that if Facebook does suddenly manage to take over everything, then you've got your Facebook strategy in place. Say, so, great, now I spend 100% of my time focusing on that strategy because that's where the market's gone. Nobody's using you know, G plus, G plus one. Twitter managed to make themselves go bankrupt because they couldn't make any money because they don't know what they're doing. So what should I do? And where should I focus my time? Facebook is a good bet because they're evolving they can see that they're driving more traffic. They're taking advantage of this peer-to-peer -peer marketing, which is much more effective now than the traditional, I'm a company, I can do it better. So they're on the right track. And then there's been those other uh, people that have sort of come out and offered similar uh, um, platforms to do the same kind of thing. And then, you know, do we talk about them now? No. So Facebook has cornered a part of the market. They've acquired this, well, from the video, you know, this, this user base that's massive. And then what they're doing, and this is why you saw the introduction of um, Facebook polls and Facebook questions, is that if you go onto the actual Facebook page, is that they're asking those 770 million people, what do you want next? Which is a great marketing strategy. Again, I've been telling people, to, you know, all these companies, ask the customers what they want, give them what they ask for. The simplest form of marketing out there. And that's what Facebook are doing at the moment. They're offering value-added services like these things, because you can use them on your personal page, you can use them on your business page to poll and survey your own followers. And it's, they're sort of talking, walking the walk as well. They're doing it, and now they're giving the opportunity to people to do it. So would I say focus everything on Facebook? No, but it's going to be a pretty important part of your online marketing strategy. I just want to, again, I mentioned it quickly, LinkedIn. Um, I know people out there in, in my industry that link all of them together, and the same message goes out to LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook. It works for some industries, but I would say you know, be cautious with it because the kind of messaging that goes out for the social networks um, can sometimes be different. But if you're one of my, uh, my colleagues in France, he's a, a public speaker and he does a lot of uh, motivational speaking and things and this, the message is the same. He's doing the same thing on Facebook then he can do the same thing on LinkedIn because he's promoting the same kind of services and there's no um, disparity there really. For most businesses, when you're targeting uh, LinkedIn um, clientele, you're targeting, I don't like using it in terms of saying more professional, but it's a professional networking site. The average spend for the, the user there is 100,000 plus. 
you've got decision makers and CEOs and directors. So they, they have to be communicated with in a different manner than you know, the guys that you know from football or cricket or whatever it is. It has to be a different message that's going out there. Right. Organic search results. We've been talking about it in a roundabout way in terms of what do we want from an SEO, successful SEO um, activity is we want to be number one on page one of Google. Again, because as consumers, we've got to that stage where we expect number one to answer our problem. So that's where we want to be. So we can evaluate our current status by typing in uh, specific elements or specific wording, keywords that we want to rank for to see whether we rank for them or not. Now, I'll just expand this one because you... I think it's the same one. Yeah, it's a bit better. This was just an example because there's lots of different ways for getting onto the pay, page one of Google. But if you type in your company name or a keyword that you want to rank for, you can quite quickly determine how much competition there is in the marketplace for you, just based on the number of results. So this was for Hotel Dubai, 85 and more than 86 million results. It's a lot of pages. So do you want to try and get into this market? Maybe not, unless you have a a very, very large budget for doing this, or that you've got a very specific niche. Now, this is very generic. Hotels Dubai is just all-encompassing, and that's why you get this many results. But you can see people are paying. These are sponsored adverts. This is Google Places. These are adverts. This is, uh, again, Google Places. So on this actual screenshot, we haven't even got to any organic search results yet, and it's taken up the whole page. So these are ways that you can evaluate a new market is there money being made in this market? Yes. People wouldn't be paying to be here and here if there wasn't. Because if, there was, if they weren't making money, they wouldn't be spending money on AdWords. The problem is, if you don't know how to use AdWords properly, you will you spend a lot of money and get no results. Google Places is another one. Google themselves said that we're making it easy for you, that they've got something like 49 million Google Places that remain unclaimed. And these are just literally positions for people to get themselves onto the front page, but people aren't actually taking advantage of that. So you can quite quickly get onto the first page of Google by claiming your Google Place. But we're talking about evaluating your current situation. So you can see here from this one that you will, by typing in specific keywords that you're going to get a little bit of an indication about who's in your marketplace. More importantly, how many other web pages are using the keywords that you're potentially looking to target within your online marketing campaign. This is different. This is the same thing. I've typed in, what did I type in? <laughs> how to change the oil on a 2011 Ford F-150 Raptor. Why did I pick this? That's my car, I love it. But this is a niche. This isn't a market, this is a niche. If I wanted to evaluate this market to see whether I wanted to go into it, there's a couple of pointers here. There's no advertising. People aren't spending money on AdWords. It's a, quite a clear indicator that there's potentially no money being made in this market. Okay, so that's one side of it. There's 558,000 results. If I did choose that I want to go into this market, I could say that 558,000 is not that many comparatively. So that I might be able to do some things in here. What's also missing from this page? Anyone care to hazard a guess? Yeah, no uh, AdWords, no Google Places. Okay, well, that's perhaps not relevant to this particular search. What else is missing on here? One thing that's missing that I would look at in terms of this is video. There's no video results on this page. So I could come into this market quite quickly, do a quick walkthrough of how to change the oil filter on a 2011 Raptor, and I could rank number one for this. Would I want to rank number one for this? Maybe not, because there's no advertising. So is it something that I would really want to rank for? Maybe not, but what's the traffic that's associated with this search stream? Because if I own a small garage and I want to become a specialist in 2011 Raptors, then this is a great opportunity for me to provide valuable content in a medium that's being consumed by just about everybody and drive them from my video to my website, which on the front has a great big map of how to get to my garage if you happen to own one of these cars. And again, what we're talking about here is micro-niching down to that kind of level. But that's a very important part of what you're looking at in your business, is that am I a generic business? Am I covering a number of different bases? If I am, how can I squeeze them down so that I can become very specific in my online marketing so that I'm actually going after a very specific market. 
this basically allows you to evaluate exactly where you are at the moment in terms of understanding your competition. It puts you on the right kind of track to understand where you are in terms of traffic for keywords. Um, and it will also allow you to look at the kind of mediums to utilize within your business to deliver your content. Because again, as I said, no video, I'd look at creating video. No audio, start using audio, that can rank quite quickly. PDFs, there's no PDF returns on there. A PDF guide would work quite well. Gives you indicators of how you can potentially get into a market and optimize your presence for that market. Right. So this one, how many people have actually downloaded the, the, the guide? I know you guys have, nobody else has. <gasps> Shame on you all, disgraceful. Basically, it doesn't matter because we're going to run through it now. But when you're looking at your current situation, we've talked about it in person, a couple of us, um, but for those that we haven't do, we want to make sure, again, going back to the point, is do you have a direct response website? Is there any point in going and undertaking SEO activity, sending thousands and thousands of people to your existing website when all they're going to do is read the information and leave? No. It's a waste of time and a waste of money for you because people coming and reading your information and then going and looking at something else, they're going to forget the information that you have. Direct response is about coming, they come and land on your site, and when they land there, you make them do something. Do an action. And again, that action can be as creative as you want. The recommendations are email and name. Collect that information from them because we all go online to find information. We go online to find free information. So if I get something for free, I might exchange my name and email address with you. That's direct response. That's eliciting a response. If you have a, a business that relies on phone calls or interaction with people, make sure that your phone number is visible on the front page. Don't put it on the contact us page 3,000 clicks down. If you want people to call you, make it easy for them to call you. Tell them, call me now, we'll have a discussion, or if you do consultancy, three 30 minute consultancy, call me now to book in for your car service. Whatever the business that you is, there's always something you can put in place to get them to give you something. Because you want to be basically remembered. You want to be remembered. You want people to spend time on your website. So that means that you need to do something to elicit a response. Recommended is email, because that falls into um, the second side of things. Do you have an opt-in? Email is great, because then you've got them for as long as they say, I'm happy to receive information. Which means that you have the opportunity to start to educate them you have the opportunity to start to educate them in how you want them to respond to your emails. So when you've got special offers, when you've got new products coming online, when you're running special events, when you're doing certain things, you can broadcast your message to people. Having built up that reciprocity, they're going to take action the way you want them to. And this is about having an actual autoresponder built into your site, and autoresponder and opt-in basically go hand in hand. They are opting in to become part of your autoresponder sequence which means autoresponder is setting up those sequences in advance so that you're not then currently on a day-by-day -day basis having to set up your marketing communication strategy. Different organizations will do it at a different level. Some people might communicate on a quarterly basis. I mean, they might have their marketing strategy on a quarterly basis, an annual basis, a monthly basis, a daily basis. It's going to be individual to each of your companies, but you can set up the messaging in advance. There's going to be certain events during the year for, that are going to be important to your customers. You can use them as an excuse to contact them, to tell them about a new product, to offer them discounts, to offer them offers, to do these kind of things. You can start to be creative about what's going on. You can make an event out of anything. You know, it's my birthday. Something happened the other day that I'm really proud of. It's an event. I'm going to do this for you. Is it anything, it can be that. But you can start to plan that out in advance so that you can start to get this messaging going. You start to build that relationship. You start to build that trust so that when you get to that point of actually asking them for money, which is what you're doing when you're pitching, they're going to be much more responsive. Number four, do you try, set up, try and sell features or benefits? This, is just, this isn't even online marketing, this is just marketing, is that we sometimes get wrapped up in what our product does. That's not really that important. It doesn't matter what your product does. What are the benefits your product provides? How does it fix the problem that I have? I don't care if your air conditioner has bells and whistles on. Does it blow cold air and does it do it well? 
Yes, and it does it for less money, and it's environmentally friendly. Okay, well, they're kind of benefits, aren't they? So it's about how is it going to fix my problem? What's my problem? How is it going to fix it? Not what does it do? Because what it does might not actually be my problem. Does your website make an impression? This is probably one of the most important things. We talked about um, opt-ins and actually having people do what you want to do. Headline is probably the single most important aspect of a website. Does it make an impression? You've got about three to five seconds to make an impression when that person lands on that website. Headline is a great way of starting the conversation in their head. A good headline will usually pose a question to the person that's landed there. Because then, my brain will start to answer that question. I'll start to think about the other questions I want to answer around that particular area. So a headline, and again, from an SEO perspective, you have to tag it appropriately so that Google knows that it's a headline. What a headline actually is when you talk about SEO is a different font. <laughs> you know, if you use WordPress, you can actually go and pick the H1 font. It just makes it bigger. But then when Google scans your site, it will pick up what that headline is. The headline will be a question. The headline will usually include your keyword as well, your primary keyword, so that Google can actually start to see when it's going through its checklist what you're about. So you're starting to also educate your customer or your prospects because you're telling them, is this question something you might be thinking about? Now, the only reason they landed on your site is because it is. Now you're reaffirming that. You are saying, well, have you thought about this question? So then they start to, th start to think around certain areas your copy or your video or your audio then runs through all of the obstacles that they're going to come up with themselves, overcomes them, so that at the end of the day, the only natural solution is to go ahead and either submit their email address, do whatever it is you asked, or hopefully buy something. And you can get to that stage from an online perspective in one go. It doesn't work as well in the, in the Middle East because the people are still, like I say, not quite so happy in terms of actually doing the online transaction, but you can get them a lot further down the line. Who else says you are great? This is a very important part of your website is testimonials, case studies. Make them visible. Put them on the home page if you're optimizing for a specific keyword. Again, it comes back to this peer-to-peer -peer marketing. If I say I'm great, you can say whatever. If everybody else says I'm great, then okay, well, he's not saying it. The company's not saying it. His customers are saying it. His customers are saying they had a good experience, they provided value, they did this, they did that, I had a great experience, the product did what it said, and much more. The consultancy got me to the next stage in my business. All of this is peer-to-peer -peer information, and it holds much more value than the company saying that they're the best at what they do. Lots of people have testimonials and case studies, but again, they hide them. They hide them sort of a couple of pages down, or there's a case studies tab, there's a testimonials tab. Why are you hiding them? You want them to be there. You want them on the home page so that people can see them because I, as a consumer, want to come to your website and I want to be made to feel comfortable that you know what you're doing, that people know what they've had good experience with you and all that kind of stuff. So who else is saying that you're great? And if people are starting a business, they often ask, well, I don't have any case studies. I haven't got any testimonials because I'm just starting. So then that's when you start to look into your friends and your family and things like that where you can ask them, say, look, if, you're, if you've developed a product, again, you can do friends and family and beta testing. Give them an example of it and just say, look, would you just have a look at this? If it's an ebook, can you just read my ebook? Tell me what you think about it. And they'll come back and tell you and say, okay, right. And then you make notes of it and say, make the changes. And then you can give it back to them and say, what about now? Is this it? And then you, you're actually developing your product. Then when you get to the stage, they say, yeah, this is quite what it is. Say, right, can you just do me a quick video review and just say this? Say, yeah, this is the best ebook that I've read on so and so, blah, blah, blah. It gives me all of this information. There's your first testimonial. So you can build your testimonials. And it's not that you're scamming people out of it. It's that you're, you've gone through the process of developing this product with them, of actually asking them to evaluate it, of asking them to experience it, and then give you your feedback, and then ask them once they've got it to the stage that they're happy with it to tell you that they're happy with it. This is testimonials, because this online has massive, massive value. People want to know that other people have already gone through it. This region is, this, is exactly the same. You look at the questions that I got on Monday. Is there any examples of customers that have done this? Can you show us more success stories? Can you do this? Something that Scott said, when you go to the doctor, do you ask him to prove how many patients he's treated? Do you ask him to prove where he went to school to get his doctorate? No. You expect that he's a doctor. He's going to treat you as a patient. We put our faith in that. Businesses need to do the same. You need to be trusted uh, and a trusted authority. 
And the only way that we can do that for the most part is to get other people to say, this is a good guy, this is a good company. And if that's the way that we have to do it, then get as many of them saying it as possible and make them visible. And then the seventh one, are you using audio and video effectively? This is uh, almost like a no-brainer a no now based on what's happening online. Video is the most consumed media. We want to be able to provide our products and services as a digestible in whichever method people actually prefer. So it doesn't matter what you're selling. You can still utilize audio, video, PDFs, uh, and copy to make sure that you're getting anybody that might be interested in your product to consume the information in the way that they prefer to do it. Some people are auditory, some people are visual, some people like to read. Why exclude them from your customer base? Make sure that you're providing for them. The other aspect of audio and video, it makes your site sticky. People hang around for longer when they're looking at a video. They, they hang around longer when they're listening to an audio, and this counts towards your rankings when you're looking at actual value of your site. In the search engines, they see and they, they measure the average stay on your site so that if you're seeing a high bounce rate, then you're not engaging them for long enough, so you can start to use things like audio and video to actually get people to hang around for a bit longer, increases your rankings as well. I think, Larry, yeah. Uh, I don't know if you touched on this in terms of design. Uh, I mean, these are the seven things, great, you can do these things. Yeah. Did you touch on design earlier? I think that they, yeah. you have them. We haven't, I didn't touch on design because, um, it's an entirely different uh, ball game because I've got a partner who's a graphic designer and we will argue about the design of a He way. didn't he start out where he started out, did he? He started out dealing with consumers. He didn't start at the top, he built his way up. Right, but so, he started in the 60s, he then had a website. No, okay. So my, point is, my point is, if everything's equal, you'd like to have a nice design so that you don't take them away from the side. It's as simple as that as a message. Yeah. I'm not saying but what design, design should look like it, it's if you're relying on design to keep people on your website, you're going to lose. There's got to be other elements of your website to hold people on there. I can hear you. <laughs> Believe me. Yeah. Plus, everything equal, the design has to keep it to the audience to find your reach. And website has to be actionable. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, I'm not saying depend on design, but you have to have a minimum of design because I've seen a lot of In what sense? For example, Jordan. Equal size keeping the same audience. One I wouldn't touch in a million years. The other one looks appealing. It gets me to the information I want to do. It takes me to the call to action quickly. Yeah. And that's it. That's fine, yeah. But again, it appeals to you. What appeals to you might not appeal to me. That's true. And so this yeah, is why that, that it is becomes true. a very muddy area because that's you're absolutely right, right when you say you do, and then you can get into the whole other aspect of it in terms of should I be using blue or green because blue means this, red means that, should I have this there, the heat map shows that people spend more time on this side, the human eye is naturally attracted to the top right hand side, but that is a different element to a business focused, it's important because some businesses need to have a certain visual effect, I just want agreed. To follow up on this, I mean if you ever go to a Chinese website to, to buy stuff, you know those big websites, big manufacturers that they sell products in China, they sell by millions a day. If you go to their website, it's a terrible website. I mean, you cannot even know where you're at. Uh, it's a very hard website to even work at, but they still, they, they sell millions on the website just because they have the product that people want available and they have that information that people want. They have, you, when you go search, you find it in the, at, at the top list. These things, they, they, they also get you into the top niche website. Yeah. I agree. Uh, design is, is, is a, a spe uh, you're absolutely right. They make money because they, they, they have a product, but they also, you've still got to find that website. Exactly. And that you might not know the Chinese name for the company. So it's based around, okay, I'm searching those for steps, units. Steps, yeah. 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 And then the I'm website looks. The yeah. But again, that's for that particular industry. For other industries, for a graphic designer, for example, they can't afford to have crappy looking website because that's what they're selling, that they're selling the design of the website. So you're right, it is, it is important. However, it's, it's one of those areas that you can get, you can sort of get almost stuck in going round and round trying to perfect the look of the website and then you forget about some of the other elements which actually hold more value when you're talking about how much money 
your, your website will actually generate for you. But it's, it is a valid point in terms of actually having some sort of design element in there, absolutely. I'm a little surprised actually that you haven't touched um, on the point that you know content is the king as far as websites go. I think um, and that's from the SEO perspective and from generating links and from getting people to whatever or pin sign up, whatever it is that you're trying to get them to do. Um, I do think that here in the Middle East there is a lot of emphasis on the look of things rather than on the content of the site. And also Because content is going to be individual to each and every organization. You're absolutely right in what you said. The reason why I haven't put it into uh, the seven secrets is because we're talking about the physical design of the website. Again, content is going to be individual to organizations. Content is covered, not labeled as content, but content is covered under video, audio, copy, which is always going to be keyword um, driven. However, the algorithm now within uh, Google, it doesn't look at keywords in terms of meta keywords. It doesn't look at keyword density anymore, so you don't have to keyword stuff. So it is about providing good content, but these days, if you're writing valuable content around what the features, uh, what, what the benefits of your solution will provide, that's going to by default count for you. Because it used to be that people would focus so much time on, okay, I need a 1 point or 3.3% 3 .3 density for my keyword. And so they write it according to that. That's not the case anymore. So now, as long as you're right, if you try and do that now, you'll be penalized. So what Google is trying to do is to encourage you to write good copy or utilize video, utilize audio, tag your videos and images with the appropriate label so that they can be ranked as well. Um, so you're right, c content is king. The reason we don't include it in terms of why or how you can evaluate your existing um, web presence is because these elements, once evaluated, much like the design, is that if you can get these elements built into your website, if you can take into consideration that you're going to need to look at article marketing, press release marketing, SEO activity, all of this other stuff, it's going to generate the kind of content that people nowadays, you could get away with copying what's on the corporate brochure into your website. What that means, though, is that it's not actually going to be providing additional value to those people that are actually coming to your site. However, it doesn't matter that it isn't structured in a specific way because it used to have to be keyword, let sentence, keyword, sentence, keyword, 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 keyword. It doesn't matter anymore. There's no necessary structure to the copy that has to be on there, plus the fact that video and audio ranks higher than copy now to a certain extent. People are shifting their focus onto creating content in a, in a more interactive manner, uh, which is why I wouldn't, didn't dwell on it. And again, you could basically do an entire presentation on content alone um, aside from this. It's always going to be very individual to each, to each company as well in terms of how they actually look at producing their content. And again, from, say, a graphic designer, the kind of content they're going to want to present to a uh, manufacturing organization. But this, the, um, the elements that go into creating your content now, they're not so strict as that if you start to write knowledgeably about your business and about your uh, product, that's going to, by default, rank you quite highly anyway. Anything else? Any other questions? No? Okay, well, what we're going to do now, assuming the uh, internet holds on, is just to go through a couple of sites that we're going through and actually go through those elements in terms of actually understanding what can be changed, what can be um, amended, what might, and again, it's always useful is that people within the room might have some interesting feedback for these particular uh, entities with a way to actually improve um, based around what we've talked about already. Uh, so the first one is, I don't, can everybody see it? Not really. You can see it or do they need the lights off? Anyone? You can see it? No? Fine, All right. تمام. إذا هون بضلوا مضويين هدول وبتصير لهم قدام تمام. بتظبطش؟ 
كلهم واحد يعني بس Okay. I don't, well, for those that can see it, who, who wants to sort of um, comment on it, basically? This is what we call a hot seat, and I've got, obviously, uh, feedback and ideas on what's good and what's not, and uh, what, well, not what's good and what's not, but what could change and what would have more effect. But based on what I've just talked about, does anybody have any feedback into what they might look at improving on this site or what they might change initially? Anyone? Based on... Yeah, that, that's uh, <laughs> potential. Yeah, <laughs> very good. Uh, anything else? Uh, any, again, just any any. It's crowded. It's crowded. Yeah. Okay. Because there's no opt-in. There's no there's no subscribe to whatever. Yeah, whatever. I think. Um, the only content at the, the first page. You, you know, you have to search for what you want. I think it's really hard. You need to make it a little bit easier. Okay. Opt-in, yeah. Did you guys have a newsletter? We had a registration at the top, but there is one like just not really on the mm. Yeah. That, that's one of the main things, and we've talked about it already, is that there needs to be A, an opt-in, and B, uh, a call to action. They, they sort of work hand in hand. That there's no, I could come to this site, and I could read, and I could look at what's on there, and then I could leave quite easily, and not, you wouldn't know other than I'd be a statistic in your analytics that you had another visitor during that month. So definitely in terms of an opt-in um, and uh, a call to action. And again, depending on what the business wants, if you want people to call you, top right-hand side, coming back to some of the other elements, human eye is naturally taken to the top right-hand side of the, uh, of the screen. So you effectively want to have your, um, your opt-in or your call to action in this area up here. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure actually from that perspective. In the Arabic world, does the does it go to the left hand side? Yeah. No, no, but if you because it's hu it's a human. This is forget websites. It's a human into human uh, tendency that the right the eye is attracted to the top right. So is it is it reversed? It definitely has. Yeah. Don't take what people know in Arabic, we have to be on an English website. It doesn't make any sense. They're reading it in English, they should have the focus like any other yeah. English website. So yeah. It's in material. That's, yeah, yeah, no, Arabic, that's the fact that we're reading it in Arabic, it's material. No, no, no. But they're saying that if this is in Arabic, my question is, if it's in Arabic, is the I naturally drawn to the top left-hand no, corner? No, the complete right. opposite. So it's the same as normal then? Yeah. The hu in, in English, the, ra the eye is taken to the right-hand side. Okay. Same in Arabic. That. that was so you just yeah. said yeah. two so completely opposite things yeah. there. Exactly. <laughs> right. So then you need to take that into consideration from that perspective in terms of where you position it for the setup of the site. But you can think about having, having, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm just putting this into consideration. I'm doing a website currently for, for, for the company I work for, and uh, I'm considering having something on the top right-hand corner to take a setup in we have three offices, so you know what am I supposed to do? Do you think I should I should put the you know get up and numbers for the three different offices that we have? Or well, it will de yeah, it depends on who you know. Why would they need to? call the specific offices is there a way of amalgamating that number is there a way if you want the call to action to be a number then uh, yeah create a central it depends why you're driving them to those specific offices and if you if you can amalgamate like I, mean, I was saying for a call center at the centralized number even if it's to a my PA service or something. Yeah, have a centralized number that then directs or a, a front office person that can do that. Because, uh, or if there's a specific reason why you need people to call specific offices, then have them, have the three of them there. There's no, no problem with that. Um, you're just giving people the choice that when they might not necessarily need that choice, that they can just pick one 
uh, and then they can be directed internally. But if there's specific business reasons why somebody has to call that specific office, then give them the opportunity to call that specific office. Usually, if you work it back, you can probably figure out that there isn't actually a real business reason for it. It's just more convenient. Then you can start to think about, okay, well, let's package it into a call center. Let's put it through a PA service. Let's do. Let's not go for on the phone call. Let's actually get them to opt in and then the first email in my autoresponder sequence is if you're here call this number, if you're here call this number, if you're here call this number and that email will be sent out as soon as they opt in anyway so then you kill both you know, two birds with one stone, you get them into your database, you provide them with the information that they need to, uh, to call the other offices so that might be a, a, way, a way around it. What, what else would people change? There's one thing that I notice as well that's not on there is a uh, headline. There isn't a headline on there that's immediately grabbing my attention. So you want to have the ability to opt in, but there's not a headline on there that's provoking a question in my mind that then I'll start asking myself the question, and then by looking further into the site, you're answering the obstacles that I'm putting up in my own mind. So you want to have a, an NH1 tag, basically. So you want to have a headline, provokes a question, it then also counts for you when you're looking in the SEO side of things because you've got a headline tag in there. It will see that there's a keyword loaded uh, uh, question, and that counts you know, as a, a plus point. Not flash. If, if you put a question as an H, I don't even know if you can do it in terms of tagging uh, H1 tag within a flash um, piece. I don't think you could anyway. And it wouldn't, if you did, you wouldn't be able to read it anyway. This, the, SE, uh, the, the search engine wouldn't be able to read. The, uh, the actual um, tag anyway. So best to, as I say, I, I would avoid flash when it comes to specific elements. Now, if you want to provide flash advertising for clients, you're selling advertising space and they want to have rotating banners and so forth, this will again depend on what uh, format you build your website in. If you're building it in WordPress, flash doesn't work very well with WordPress. It has a real, there's a real compatibility issue there. I have one, it, yeah. this, is, this is a website to, to help you serve, to, to know what's in PowerPoint, right? As a visitor from, you know, to help you see what, is that what it is? Also, also for visitors, it's also for visitors. What's that? It's also for visitors, like following. Yeah, yeah following. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't visitors. you think the search button should be the, the most clear one? So, that, because people come into this website because they want to find something mm. in PowerPoint. So I think the search button is the one what you talk about is the highlight part of the web website is the search button because that's the first thing that is coming to this website for goes to look for something in PowerPoint. Yeah, I think that's what the tagline doesn't say anything about the design. I mean it's very generic. The other point that we need to make here is English Power makes its money through advertising, isn't it? And so 